Hello and welcome to another Talking To episode. I'm your host Teddy, and today I'm being joined once again by... Hayden! And today we're going to talk about the Tim and T, the 2012 Season 2, Episode 17, The Neutralized, or no, uh, was it, uh, Neutralized. Uh, what do you think about this episode briefly? Um, to be honest, this was a pretty cool episode. Um, this is very different um, to what to what I've seen as of late, and I thought it was really cool. Just the scene... Um, Two um two adversaries who I'd never thought would team up, become partners in crime together, and um yeah, them two slash and neutralizer. It was just so cool. Like it was too I was not thinking that these two characters could be so good together, but yeah. Yeah, I mean I've always really enjoyed this episode for what it was, especially we bring back some really great characters, such as like Slash, Neutralizer. But then it's always been a part about this episode that's always really annoying me. Just like there's so many other like, problems where like, it, I, I feel like you can understand where I come from with like the case stuff where it just feels like only this episode is just a big problem and then like going forward it's not really much of a problem and then mention it ever again. It just feels so annoying with this bit here, but yeah, other than that, <laughs> it was decent. Um, okay, so we do first start off with Raph and Casey, they're going across rooftops, they're jumping, and then that's when Casey makes his first mistake, and they're trying to track down a Krang, who they uh, get attacked by uh, Slash. Uh, what do you think about that scene? Um, to be honest, I thought that was um, pretty cool, seeing Raphael and Casey Jones back at it on the streets again, trying to fight the Krang, trying to hunt him down, um, but it was pretty weird that the Krang were carrying just plutonium around um, in the streets of New York, and it was just really crazy. It's like plutonium, something so radioactive, and they're just carrying it around New York City, just like just pure radiation just leaking from that plutonium. I could just imagine it. <laughs> but anyways, I'm getting off topic again. Uh, but yeah, I thought it was pretty cool um, seeing Slash and Casey go about it. And then, of course, what was really cool was, and a bit striking, was the Krang. Like, literally, there was just bodies upon bodies of Krang just littering the streets. And we had no clue who it was until we got to see the silhouette of Slash. And when I saw the silhouette of Slash, I knew that this was going to be a good episode. Yeah, I mean, I feel like with this bit here... I mean, I did enjoy it just because I enjoy, like, these kind of things. It's, I know, I, I mean, it's sort of like what I expect to see in, like, superhero stuff, but, like, they always, like, skip this stuff, like, sort of stuff out, which I'm quite glad that this bit, is, like, is in. And I must admit, it did feel, like, really weird that all of a sudden, just, like, Casey in this episode was just making so many mistakes just out of nowhere. I think that's, like, the most annoying part about this episode was the fact that he was making them. And I do, I mean, I know that Casey just make mistakes, but not... As many as he did in this episode, and I feel like they're just trying to highlight that problem. Yeah. And yeah, this bit here just felt so like weird, just having him just you know just you know like jumping over to the building, then just you know uh, uh, like accidentally missing the building, but you know just barely uh, grabbing onto it, or you know grabs ref's uh, side accident. Like it just feels so weird that he's making so many mistakes when normally he's not like this. And I know that like he's trying to emphasize the points and stuff like that, but. I do feel like there was like better ways they could have gone around it, um, but yeah, I must admit I did feel I do feel like it was a little bit weird like seeing Casey, um, oh no, oh no, he's crying like uh, like running around with plutonium. That felt a bit weird. Uh, slash bit was quite cool. However, I do f um, question it just because he got there like really quick, and I know Slash is like a big character, but I don't think he can jump across roofs or like, up to roofs and all that. So hmm. I found that to be a bit <laughs> quite weird. Um, Similar to that, we do get to see Ruff and Casey, they go back to the lair, they're talking to the guys, and that's when they decide to go uh, out on patrol. Uh, what do you think about that scene? Um, to be honest, it was... I'm not too sure. It was nice to see that the turtles regrouped and they started talking about the plans. It's like, look, this guy has been taking out the Krang and he's now got plutonium. Like... That is just the worst combination you could ever possibly hear from someone in 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 this series. Like someone's taken out the Krang single-handedly, and now they've got plutonium. Like you don't know what they're gonna do with that plutonium. You don't know if they're gonna make a bomb or 
a, a nuke or a dirty bomb for that matter. Like, I know it's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but anything can fly um, with that. So it was pretty cool to see them like, look, we're going to have to track this guy down now because this guy could do some serious damage. And yeah, so um, I thought it was an all right scene because they regrouped. It's like, look, I'm going to think about this logically. I'll take the sewers. You take the rooftops. You take the alleyways and do it like actually like they fought it through. And they were pretty smart about it, which I quite like. Yeah, I mean, I found like this bit here was like, one of those kind of scenes for just like setting things up for the next bit. And I thought it was okay. I mean, I do have like a few like little questions about it, just because like Don was asking like why would Shreya go after the Krang and all that. I mean, like, like why would like Shreya go after him? Just or like, why would Shreya go after them, even though they're working together and all that? I found that to be so weird. Like why Don would think that Shreya's working uh, uh, like trying to take down a Krang. And then also you've got Raph saying that Casey's in over his head. Like, I want to know how he's in over his head, considering for like before he's fought like the Krang and all the other stuff. And how is this now in over his head? I found that. Yeah. Mm. Um. So then after that, uh, we oh, do get to see. Before we um, sorry. Before we go to the next one, I just want to say um a bit more about Casey and him going way over his head. I believe Casey is now qualified for this sort of stuff because he's been to different dimensions. He's fought against the Krang and he's fought against Master Shredder's footbots as well. And he's been eaten alive by an interdimensional worm. So yes, I, I think he is more than qualified. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's found it so weird, like, only now he's not, like, in over his head. Uh, but then after that, we do get to see uh, the characters uh, go out and try to find stuff. Um, what do you think of um, Mikey and Don's scene where they found the Krang and they started using their body parts for comedic purposes? <laughs> <laughs> uh, to be honest, I thought it was pretty funny, um, them using the Krang body parts. Uh, a bit weird, like, they're just playing around with it, but it was kind of, like, really weird. Like, there was all these Krang around, all these dead Krang, well, not dead, but, like, these hollow shells of Krang, and they're just playing around with their body parts like it's nothing. Like, oh, look, we found some dead Krang body parts, let's play, um, let's, let's play charades with them, you know? <laughs> yeah, just, I mean, I did really enjoy this bit, and this scene here has always made me laugh. I don't know why, just... Like seeing like Mikey doing it, and then uh, and then you see Donny at the very end just puts like hand on his face. I uh, I don't know why it works so well. Um, so yeah, then after that we do get to see um, the second fight, uh, and we do get to see neutralizer. Uh, what do you uh, like expect to neutralize to come back? Uh, no, not really. I wasn't expecting neutralizer to come back, and. I guess I should have uh, been more prepared because Neutralizer is literally the name of this episode. And last week, uh, when we did what the pod... Uh, excuse me. Cat got my tongue. Right. Uh, last week, when you asked me what type of episode this was, um, I couldn't say anything because I, I didn't know. But now, when I saw the Neutralizer and the name of the episode i was like really like ah, oh, i knew it i should have known because neutralizer and neutralized it's literally just saying look neutralizers in this episode so <laughs> i should have been more prepared for that but no um really i was taken away by the fact that neutralizer was in this episode again after the turtles broke him out of that crane prison i didn't think we were going to see him again with majority of the other uh, mutated creatures, but it was really cool to see that they um, brought back the neutralizer. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't. I mean, I don't know, just because I think around this sort of time when I was watching this episode for the first time, I was quite surprised just because he hasn't been in the show for quite a while, and well, we know how they like to be with certain characters where they have potential but don't really use them all too much. And I think that it's just so great to have him back just because. Again, he's just such a great character, and he, and he really needs to be in more episodes. And it was just so great and amazing to see him here, and yeah. Um, but what do you think about the uh, second fight with uh, Raph, uh, Slash, uh, KC, and Neutralizer versus the Krang and all that? Uh, what do you think about that fight scene? Uh, that fight scene was pretty cool, 
just to see um, Slash and Neutralizer work as a team in Partners in Crime. Um, like I said before, a really cool combination of characters working together and something that I'd never thought to see in in this series, like the mutants working together. And it was, it was pretty cool to see um, how they operate. Like, you've got the muscle and you've got the brawn, really. So you've got, like, Neutralizer, who's the brawn of the operation. So he's, like, the intelligent one who knows how the Krang systems work. And then you've got Slash, who's the muscle guy. Like, he can, he can take out anyone, which is pretty cool. And, of course, seeing the turtles get beaten up by Slasher and the Neutralizer um, was... Um, pretty cool as well not in the fact that they got beaten up and got their asses handed to them but the fact that they were fighting against um like i would say like friends because one the turtles broke them out of the prison and two like come on you both had the crane why don't you team up but of course um neutralizer has his ambitions to take out the crane at any means necessary so yeah, it was pretty cool to see that fight, though, just break out and seeing Donnie get flown around like he was nothing, like he was a rag doll or something on the back of Slasher. I think we're talking about different fight scenes. I was talking about the one with uh, the one with the Krang and Casey and Slash and Raph and Neutralize. I think you've gone a bit too far ahead. Oh, damn, have I gone a bit too far ahead? <laughs> oh, oh no, dear, it's my bad. It's fine. Um, gosh, um... I'll just stay my bit, shall I? Yeah, you say your bit. <laughs> yeah, so with um, the second fight scene with Slash, uh, Raph, Casey, and Neutralizer in the streets, I thought the fight scene was... It was okay, but I, I don't know. I think for, like it was one of those weak fights. But it wasn't really much of a fight. It was just setting things up for like the events to play out in, in the episode. And I think that the fight scene was okay, and I do think that it was a lot... I know I found it to be interesting with what Slash and Raph are saying, um, and I think it's pretty interesting with like Raph going on about how like Slash is only keep is holding on to the past, and like Slash is like he's still in his mindset of Raph has betrayed him and all that. And I do think like that's a really interesting idea and concept, especially for like these two to go down with a fight. But I feel like it does also make like Casey and Neutralize a bit pointless and weird just because I mean with how Casey was in, the, uh, in this episode. It just didn't really uh, present him in like a really good light or anything like that. And Neutralizer, it was interesting because he didn't. He, he was powerful in that scene, but at the same time, he didn't. It wasn't really there. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I understand. I understand where you're coming from with that. And now, I just want to quickly say as well, um, just adding to your statement, um, I really did like how. Uh, Slash was like being very sentimental, sentimental about the past. It's like he still holds that grudge with Raphael, but over time that kind of like dissipates throughout this episode, which I quite like as well. So it was pretty cool to see that happen. Yeah. Um, so then going into the next scene, we do get to see all the characters they're back in the lair talking about stuff, and we do get to see a Pac-Man reference. Uh, what do you think about that scene? Uh, yes, I did see it too, and I, I couldn't help but uh, couldn't help myself but laugh at that. It's like he's just eating all the crank positions away. It's like seriously, like we we've got a situation here, and he's just playing Pac-Man on like the computer, and it was just so funny, um, just so funny. And that little reference just made it a bit better that scene. Yeah, I mean, again, it's like one of those kind of scenes where you don't expect... To, like, I, I know, it's one of those kind of scenes where it, it's always been funny no matter what, and I love that scene so much. And I wish for, like, they did more of this kind of humour with Mikey where it's not really forced in, and actually is, uh, like, actually funny, and... Yeah, it's mm, amazing. Uh, so mm. after that, we do get to see uh, Slash and uh, Neutralizer, their sort of, like, origin of how they met. Uh, what do you think about that origin scene? Uh, before we get onto the origin story, I know we keep going back, but I quickly want to say I just love every time they open up the freezer to the fridge, um, we just see Ice Cream Kitty again. <laughs> like, he's still around and he just hands him, like, an ice ice pack. Is like, when Casey says, Ralph, ice me, and then, of course, he goes to the fridge, 
and I Ice Cream Kitty just throws him a bag of ice. I, I'm sorry, but I just love every time I see Ice Cream Kitty. He's like, oh my gosh, he's still around. He's still there. <laughs> I, I don't know. I just I find Ice Cream Kitty such like a cool character. He's just that little um. I wouldn't say unimportant, but he's just there, you know. He's just there, and he's just acting like, oh, everything's fine. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I, I can't say much more than that. Uh, what about the origin scene, though? Yes, the origin scene. I I really did like that, the origin scene. Um, seeing Slasher and Neutralizer talk about taking down the Krang together as brothers in arms and partners in crime to destroy the Krang at any means necessary. And I, I thought that was pretty cool because, like I said, two adversaries becoming partners... And I never saw it coming, to be honest. Like, these are two completely different characters and one yeah, with completely different mindsets. Like, one wants to destroy the Krang, one wants to get back at the Turtles. Like, I would never thought I'd see the two come together, but it works. Somehow it really does work. Until towards the end of this episode, of course, but it really does work. I mean, the, the thing... I, I don't know. The thing about this that was, like, really, uh, like really annoying for me... It, it doesn't really feel like the kind of origin that I would expect for, like, for these two, just because, you know, these are, like, characters which you expect, like, a big, like, battle or something like that. But I feel like with, like, how things work, especially, like, when you look at, um, Debsu, was it, um, well, Henry Wire, where do get see Slash, uh, captured, I think that this would have made a lot more sense if, like, Slash didn't get out, and I think that, you know, Slash was just, like, move from one chamber to another, and I feel like, just because it just seems so weird that Slash... Will get captured again. I think that's like the weirdest part about it. And I understand we like neutralizes. He he seems like he fits like really well in, especially with his motives and all that. But with how Slash is, we've got captured again. It just seems so weird not like him to be captured. And yeah. I think that like even like after the meet up, he's not really like that great or anything. It's just you know neutralizes jumps down, beats him up, turns on his voice, and they're like, yeah, we're brothers now. It just seems so anticlimactic. I feel like there's, like there's so much more they could have done, but yeah, they just don't. They just like play around with the idea of like, oh, these two are like, you know, they're here, and they're such big origin. It's not really. <laughs> it's, just, it's so yeah. disappointing. I know, but how did Slash get captured again? That's that's what I want to know. Well, unfortunately, we never find out. <laughs> oh, that sucks. Yeah. But yeah, so then going into the next scene, which you've already talked about, uh, which was the, um, what was it, the, the warehouse fight scene. <laughs> Do you have anything else yep. to say about it? Uh, yeah, sorry about that. I kind of got ahead of myself <laughs> there. Um, but no, I thought it was a really cool um, scene, um, seeing the turtles and Slash, uh, Slash and Neutralizer uh, fight out. And of course, seeing Donnie get thrown around like a ragdoll. Um, I thought it was pretty cool. Um, pretty cool to see that happen as well, and um, it was pretty interesting as well that they um, they knew what they were. How can I say this? That they knew that they were looking for the communication orb as well. Like they had a goal in mind, and I just quickly want to say as well, you can tell um, the way. Ugh, excuse me. Oh gosh, my brain's not working. Um, <laughs> Ah, here it is. Um, I'd like to point out that you can tell where the Neutralizer is going with this, like, partnership. He He's determined to take out the Krang at any means necessary. Even saying he will take out innocent civilians in New York City to do so. And you see Krang, and you see, um, not Krang, um, Slasher. Um, Slash, <laughs> sorry, jeez, I'm getting my words mixed up. Um, Slash have second thoughts, and he's doubting himself. And this is how the personality, uh, these two personalities show, and which I find pretty cool. It's like Slash is questioning whether this was a good idea or not, and that's what I love about it because Slash is starting starting to finally realise that he may be on the wrong yeah, side. I, mean, of history I think here. that this like, fight scene, I think it's like one of these really fun fight scenes. I, I get in, like Casey. I feel like he could have done quite a bit, but unfortunately he doesn't. And I do feel like there's like a lot of really fun bits in this uh, fight scene. Like we do get to see like Donnie just going like spinning around, love that. And 
I don't know, just think about it was just a fun fight. I do feel like, um, I do feel like, I think he's like neutralized. I do feel like he's a bit underutilized in this scene. I do feel like he could do a lot more, but they don't really do so much with him. And I feel like this like fight scene is a bit too short just because I feel like there's a lot they could have done with this fight scene. A lot of like really fun, unique things, especially like how like, I, I do feel like both of these characters could be a lot more fun and more utilized. Just because like in the episodes where I did get seen in previously were like they were big threats. And here they are taking on like two at a time, and they're getting like pretty much, like even sort of results in a way. I do feel like it was the, the the like power balance stuff was a little bit out, like just like a little bit out of whack, I would say. But I think overall, this like this sort of, like fight scene overall was like really fun. But I feel like there's a lot more they could have done with it. But unfortunately, they don't really do too much, which is a real shame because you know there's a lot more. They could, like, I feel like there's a lot they could have done with these characters. Um, so yeah, so then after that, um, we do get to see, uh, Casey leaves, uh, what do you think about that scene? Uh, to be honest, I, um, I thought that it, it wasn't, <sighs> to be honest, this episode has my, has its annoying parts, like, with Casey making all these mistakes, and Raphael being annoyed with him about said mistakes, and telling him he's not ready, it, it was just a bit annoying, it's like, look, Guys, seriously, we've been through this before, and he's ready. Like he's done all these things. Like he's fight, he's fought against Shredder's Krang box. He's been eaten by an interdimensional worm. Uh, I think he's more than qualified. And of course, I thought it was a bit petty, like him walking away, acting like a child, and Raphael being annoyed, and his anger taking over the situation again. Yeah, I, I mean, found it just really I found petty. It, like so. I mean, he says up one of these kind of things where, like, you know it's not really going to last, and, and it, it, it's just, like, so stupid that like, dude can't, like, sign up this. Especially with, like, how old Casey was acting, it's just so, like, so petty and stupid, and it's so annoying. And, like, it's one of these things where, like, with these, like, especially because he's the main character, you know that if he leaves, he'll just come back in, like, like, either, like, by the end of the like, episode, or within, like, the next few episodes. It's all like with the April situation, basically, they didn't give enough time for it to be impactful or anything. It was just like, you know, it's there, but what did you really do with it? You didn't do anything with it. And, if anything, the Turtles were getting on a lot, uh, just fine without Casey, so it wasn't that much of a big deal. <laughs> well, so you want Casey to leave, basically. Well, after this episode, I don't think it really matters, does it? <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, so yeah, then after that we do get to see, uh, Neutralizer and Slash, they're talking and find out about the new Krang weapon, and that's when they go to the docks to find out, uh, what the new Krang weapon is. What was you, uh, um, what do you think of the new Krang weapon? Um, to be honest, I, um, I'm not too sure, like, sh like, I think it's a bit of a downgrade, to be honest. From the giant flying space station to like this AT-80 type walker, I I'm not too sure. Like I thought it was a bit of a letdown. Like I thought this was going to be like a huge, powerful weapon, and it just kind of reminds me of an AT-80, you know, from Star Wars, just walking around on its two legs. But yeah, to be honest, it was kind of a letdown. I thought this was going to be a huge, powerful new weapon, and I'm like, okay, I want to see what the Krang's playing with. But it's just an 8080, and I just, I, I, it was a bit of a letdown in my opinion. I mean, I found uh, like the weapon. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I've always found it to be one of these ones that's just like quite cool to look at, and do you think that like there's a lot of things that they could have done with it, and. I always do feel like with this weapon in particular that because it's like such giant and what it, what it does, I always felt like there was a lot more they could have done with this uh, like big weapon. I always feel like it should have been like a bigger threat than what it actually is because it, it just feels like a bit more of like a I, I, I wouldn't say like inconvenience but like a bit more of a threat than an inconvenience but yeah. So then what do you think about the final fight scene? The final fight scene I'm just going to make sure we're on the right page here. Um, this is the fight scene where Slasher goes absolutely crazy and starts to kill everyone with the giant AT-80, right? Uh, yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> I didn't want to, like, <laughs> miss or jump any steps again. Uh, but no, I thought that was really cool. Like, Slasher um, coming around and coming to his senses is like, look, this is, this is wrong. Like, Neutralizer is going to use this weapon to take out 
not only the crank, but New York City and all those innocent civilians. And he's finally, he's, his humanity pulls through and tells him, look, I'm not going to do this anymore. This is not what we signed up for. I'm out. And then, of course, Neutralizer, he doesn't like the word no, so he takes, he tries to take out Slasher and the rest of the Turtles. But the, lo and behold, the great Casey Joan returns with his somehow crazy hockey skills and hits like a perfect score um on the giant 80 80 um and pulls like a, a luke skywalker like hitting the um hitting his hockey puck right into the like the small target and blowing up the whole thing you know yeah i mean i think that we're just i i, I don't know where to be really begin with this one just because i i, I I've, I've enjoyed this fight scene but I feel like at this point, it is... I, I, I don't know what to really say, just because... Hmm, I, I feel like this is one of these scenes, or scenes that just... By the time at this point in this episode, I feel like I was sort of a little bit done with this episode uh, by this point. I mean, I really did enjoy this scene, because what they did was like slash, and and I feel like the twist neutralised, I feel like it was coming, but... I feel like, like what uh, Slash did, I thought that was pretty interesting. And I thought like there was all really great moments in this uh, scene here, but I think that just with how they'd done the rest of the episode, I feel like I was sort of like just done. Um, but I feel like with Casey, he had one of those kind of scenes where just, I, I, I don't know, I think like, because again I was sort of like done with this point, it was just like, yeah, it's kind of cool entrance, but again we knew that it was coming, so it wasn't like, oh my god, I can't black or anything like that. But it was pretty cool to see him uh, do a trick shot into it, but... How convenient! He shot it in the one small hole that had to had uh, well, had led to the um, like crystal and all that. How convenient! It just felt a lot like that kind of thing where it's just like, eh. <laughs> um, but yeah, overall, I thought it was like an okay fight. But I think that's just because I was maybe just done with this bit. <laughs> um, mm, but then we do get okay. see. Um, but then we do get see at the uh, very end where we do get see neutralizer. He tries to escape, but. He gets sort of teleported, sort of not, and electricity comes out of him. Uh, what do you think about that scene? Um, to be honest, that was pretty cool. When ne Neutralizer tried running away with his teleportation device, he couldn't because Raphael disabled it uh, with his weapon. And to be honest, it kind of reminded me a bit of when um, Star Trek, when they used the phases, like they, the phase gateway, um, to teleport from place to place and it kind of reminded me of like when you get stuck between um, different uh, gates and phases and all that like he was stuck there like he was being torn apart um, with the teleportation device and all that and I thought that was pretty cool like he's coming and going but he's not actually there if you understand where I'm coming from like he's he's in reality but in fact he's not like he's teleporting between one place and another and his body isn't actually becoming full from it and that that just set off so many like thoughts it's like oh my gosh could it become like a an assassin ghost or would he become like a phaser which he can phase through walls and become an even greater threat and that's what i really liked about it because it's like oh this is something new this is something that we haven't seen before and you know me if you've been a long time viewer of this podcast you know me i like to go on tangents and think of absolutely crazy things for alternates and like what's going to happen for different characters in the story itself for this uh, for this series so yeah that's that's what happened for me but no i thought that was really cool i mean I think that because I know where this all goes, it's interesting. But I think that because of like how long we had to wait to get to the bit where he comes in again, it's really annoying because you almost pretty much forget about Neutralizer, and it's really disappointing. Uh, but I feel like this was like a cool scene, like to set things up. But I think had they not like done anything with his character. I think this would have been like a really weird scene had they not done anything with him. And if anything, I think that might have been like the original plan not to include him ever again, which it just seems so weird, but yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, what do you think about this episode overall? 
overall, I thought this was like a really good little episode. Um, it was very cool to see two adversaries working together, um, trying to take down the Krang. And it was nice to see Slash again and seeing Slash develop a conscience and somewhat forgiving Raphael for the past and, and seeing Slash let go of that grudge that he had towards Raphael and the Turtles and going his own way. I thought that was pretty cool to see because not only that, it's character development for Slash. Like he's going his own way. He wants to make sure that he doesn't turn out to be the bad guy anymore. And I thought that was just a really cool little piece in there. That, um, that they put in there. Yeah, I mean, I think that this episode, it is, like, really great, and I do really enjoy it for what they do do in this episode, but I think, again, they do do quite a lot of like, annoying things, especially with, like, Casey, which I think is probably the most annoying part about this episode, and I think had they, like, changed him up to be better, I feel like it would have worked, because I do feel like they made him stupid just because they had to do it. And I feel like he, like, Casey would have been, like, like I, I don't know, I think, like, Casey by himself, like, like you know, like, not, like, making all those mistakes, I think would have been, like, a really good example, like, showing, like, how partners would have been. But, I don't know, I think it's a really weird thing just because I, I enjoy this episode for, like, a, like, so many different reasons. But I think there's, like, quite a few reasons was just, like, ah, if I had change that one thing, it would have been good. Uh, but, um, yeah, so, um, yeah, do you want to hear uh, some comments now? Let's hear them. Uh, okay, so we do have uh, a few. Um, so, Emperor uh, Brodus2000, they put, Ocean of Shrides of the Wars in more episodes. He's my favourite Timothy villain. And, yeah, I really, want to, I really want to see him in more episodes. He's just such a great character. Um... And then freelance uh, wolf, uh, they put. Um, uh, so um, so <laughs> so in the initial comments, I was saying like the Casey being like making some mistakes was a bit pointless. Uh, but freelance wolf, they put it's not pointless. Uh, Casey takes too many risks. Um, if Raph says so, then it must be really bad. And Raph uh, won't be always there to protect him. Maybe he went about it wrong, uh, say, um, but he's absolutely right about Casey not being trained enough to go up against more powerful enemies. He's just concerned about his friend who can't, um, um, and he's just concerned about his friend who could get himself uh, point, uh, killed pointlessly, and he would be around, and he wouldn't be around to save him. Which I do understand, I do agree with that way he's coming from, but I do feel like he was like presented in a more like stupid way in terms of making more mistakes in this episode. Compared to other ones, I, I don't know. I, I, just because, just like, just like another good example is that when he was like, trying to get through the window and his like closest stick got through that. It's just so many like small little stupid mistakes that somehow never happened before, but only now. It's, oh god. <laughs> yeah, it is pretty weird how they played that out. I'm not a fan of it. Yeah. Um, ISYAR89, they put, uh, yep, the episode uh, was looking at the relationship dynamics between Rafa and his new friend, uh, Casey, as compared to Slash and his new friend, Neutralizer. Neutralizer was being uh, manipulated, uh, Neutralizer was being manipulative uh, with Slash, and while Rafa was being caring to the best of his abilities with Casey. Also, the Krang weapon looked like the looked like an, looked like an ATST Walker from Star Wars. In case he's talking, uh, talking that, uh, taking that shot, it reminded me of Luke uh, destroyed the Death Star. <laughs> um, yes, I knew it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I do think that, that like that bit there is pretty interesting in terms of like, showing the relationships. But I think they could have done it without Casey making so many mistakes. And I think like that would show you like how good they are. As like partners compared to Slash and Raph, you know, where basically it was like a very harmful relationship where, you know, because they had that history of each other and how they want to go separate ways and do their own separate things while still being together, it's sort of like hurting it. I do feel like that would have been a much better thing just because like, like Neutralizer and Slash were almost like Raph and, uh, Raph and Slash where, you know, they want to be together but they have two different views on how to get around it. I think it would have been much better if Casey was just himself. <sighs> ah, but, yeah. So then going into um, the uh, trivia. Um, when Casey and Raph landed from the roof uh, to go to a Raph, uh, uh, after the crane, before Slash showed up, uh, the shot behind him is Nate Cowabunga, 
reference to the classic 1987 uh, series catchphrase. Um, and then there's actually quite a few Star Wars references in this episode, which I'm just going to go f uh, through more quite now. So, according to the weapon is d just like the uh, so according to the weapon schematic. Oh uh, God, according to the weapon schematics are shown in a hologram like manner uh, similar to the Death Star from Episode uh, Nets Four. Uh, the Krang's new uh, uh, bipool episode uh, mobile weapon feels similar to both Star Wars Episode uh, Five, Imperial ATST, and AT AT Walkers, and end up smashing Krang soldiers with similar fate to Luke Skywalker's uh, Snow Speeder. Uh, the neutralizer again shot uh, so many uh, so much is the same way uh, Jawas uh, used to capture R two D two Star Wars Episode uh, Four. Uh, Don't Tell the Throws a Baseball, uh, uh, Don't Tell the Throws a Baseball with Explosive, very similar to Luke's uh, training drone from Star Wars Episode 4. In the same sequence, Don't Tell says, uh, he's got, um, he's got, uh, he goes nothing. A quote from Lando, um, from Star Wars Episode uh, 6, which I don't think that's much of a uh, reference for like the pulling that strings there. Um, in, uh, the next one is Casey Jones shoots a bomb park into a crank. Uh, weapon, a small vental pool, just like uh, uh, Luke Skywalker used phantom torpedoes to hit small ventilation pools in Death Star in the end of uh, Episode 4. Uh, Neutralizer's end stance is much like Death, uh, Darth Vader's uh, after coming out of the Emperor, uh, Emperor's re reconstruction pod in the, in, in the, in the, in the end of Episode uh, 3. Uh, did you notice all those references? Uh, yes, I did notice all those. Uh, did notice those references, especially the Star Wars ones. The, those ones really took my interest, and I was thinking, oh, will they do that? Will they reference Star Wars? Because I wondered. I I did say in the pod. I did say in today's podcast, but I didn't want to sound like a complete fool to say, oh, that's not a reference, Hayden. You're just being silly. But no, I was right. The Star Wars. References with like the 8080 and Casey Jones' incredible shot into like that small target. That was that was pretty cool. But yeah, I did enjoy those references, even though they're subtle. They just make up. Um, they just make up the episode and make it a bit better, you know. Yeah. Um. Okay. So with the cars, I feel like you're going to be very surprised with the neutralizer. Um. Okay. So Casey's voice by Josh Peck. There's another voice by Rob Paulson, the Crane voice by Noah North, another voice by Jason Biggs, Mark Hedger voice by Greg Sipes, uh, Raphael voice by Sean Assentine, uh, Slash voice by Corey, uh, Corey Feldman, uh, Ask and Kitty voice by Kevin Eastman. Now, who do you think uh, voice neutralizer? Ooh, um, I swear we've gone over neutralizer before, haven't we? Uh, no, this is the first time it's given voice. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, gosh. Um, I, I, I'm not too sure. I'm completely clueless on that one, man. Well, the person who plays him is T uh, Danny Tarajo. Once you see his face, you'll be like, "Oh, that person." Hold on. I'm gonna have a look myself. It, I'm probably gonna be like, "Oh, him." Yeah. Um, he, he has one of those faces for like you look at him and go, like, "Oh, that person," but not the voice. You you, you never associate the uh, you know, actor with the name, but when you look at his face, you're like, "Oh, that person." I guarantee you, you like seeing. Him. Oh my god! Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Oh, he's such a cool guy. Honestly, such a cool actor. Like, damn. Yeah, now that you now that you say now that I see his face, I would never expect him to be like the the neutralizer. That was oh, that's so cool. Yeah, he he's been in so much. I mean, he's got Fate One things upcoming, which that just says a lot about him. I mean, he's just done. I I feel like he's just been like every franchise ever, just because. I mean, just looking down at it now, I feel like we might have enough time to go through all of it. But like, he's done just done so much. Um, I just don't even know where to begin with him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, wow. Uh, there's like so much stuff which I've not seen. Which I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm really like ashamed that I've not seen as much as as much as stuff as he's been in because again, he's done so much. I'm just, I'm still scrolling. I'm only through 2020. Like, damn. 
Um, yeah, I'm still in 2017 and it's still going. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's in Flash and that's a pretty decent, uh, big character there. Uh, what other things he's been in that people seen? <laughs> he's just... Like, he's been in Death Race. I've seen Death Race yeah. and that's a pretty cool one. Oh. Um, he's... No way. No. Ha I was in Brooklyn nine, nine Hold on a minute. Oh yeah, Brooklyn Nine Nine. That's a good one. But guess what? It says here on his IMDb IMDb page that he's been in the High Fructose Adventures of the Honor uh, for the Annoying Orange. Uh, <laughs> um, I I'm not too sure if that's a mistake or whether that's true. Like the Annoying Orange. Like I used to watch that all the time, but never really picked up on it. Is, um, is that a good thing or a bad thing? <laughs> Well, the annoying orange was um, basically an orange that talks, and he was really annoying. Yeah, I know who. I... Hence the name annoying orange. Yeah, I know where he is, but uh, <laughs> I, I I can't tell if that's a good thing or a bad thing. But he's been in it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's been in all. The, he's been in the Spy Kids. <laughs> remember, remember the Spy Kids. Again, I ask, is that, that a good old... thing or a bad thing? <laughs> I don't know. But no, he's been in a lot of stuff. He's been in the Death Race 2, Death Race 3. I love the Death Races. They're so cool. Um, Breaking Bad. Yeah, he's been in Breaking Bad. Good show. Oh, my God. I'm not even finished. I'm still scrolling down, and I can't... It's just so many. He's just such a cool character, and uh, such a cool actor as well. Like, he's been in so much, and he's done so much, and he's so talented, and his portfolio... It's just so huge. I think I'll be here all night trying to see which ones he's been in. Okay, I finally got to the bottom. He started off his first movie in 1983. Damn. Um, 1983. Damn. And he's just been doing it ever since. Wow. Such a cool guy. Such a cool actor. Yeah. And I never thought he would actually be in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles series. <laughs> like, I just, I never thought of it before. But, wow. Yeah, literally, he's been in so much. Okay. So, so going into next week's episode, which... Oh, boy. <laughs> it's... He's been in Grand Theft Auto as well. Ooh. Vice City Stories. Hmm. Okay, well... Yeah. Okay, well, for next week's episode, it is one of the, uh, one of the best uh, episodes from this season, and I guarantee you'll be in like your top ten episodes for this uh, for the season. So the episode is called All right. "The Wrath of Tiger Claw." What do you think is going to happen in that episode? Well, I think Tiger Claw is going to be in this episode. I'm just going on a hunch here, but <laughs> <laughs> I think Tiger Claw is going to come back. He's going to return more angrier than ever. And I think we're going to have, like, a proper, like, mid... Is it? I wouldn't say... Are we through halfway through this series? Yeah. Or is this coming towards the end? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, oh, um, yeah. Um, oh, um, we're near the end. We're near the end. So, okay, so we're coming up to, like, this big battle. Okay, I think there's going to be Tiger Claw. Tiger Claw's going to come back. And I think it's going to be a huge battle with the turtles but i'm not too sure what the motive is or like what the story is behind it i think the shredder may be behind it as well i think he's going to be in this as well but definitely tiger claw is going to go up against the turtles i don't know how it's going to play out but i just know it's going to be a good one well all i'm going to say is that you're going to be shocked with what they do in the episode what is revealed and stuff like that and the final battle is one which you're going to be speechless about it is that good. It, even after all these years, people were still talking about this episode, like how good it is. It is like one of those episodes really? that's just like, how did we get this episode? It is that good. <laughs> really? Yeah. You're saying it's that good, huh? Yeah, it's. I'd say like even better than like some of the, like 2003 episodes. It is one of the best episodes ever. Really? Yeah, it is just so great. I mean, I'm really hoping for like. I'm, I mean, I'm really hoping for like all this like hype is like Rick is gonna work for next week's episode. And it's not gonna be like a letdown, but I'm pretty sure. All right. But I'm pretty sure it will be. I'm gonna hold you to that. <laughs> I'm sure you will now. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm gonna hold you to that. 
You heard it here first, folks, <laughs> that this is going to be the best episode for this season. This is what Teddy's saying, so I'm going off his word. Not the best episode of the season, but one of the best episodes. One of the best episodes, okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. no worries. But I'm, I'm going to hold you to that, all right? <laughs> if, I, if I'm not pleased that next week, I'm going to have something to talk about, all right? <laughs> okay, we'll see. Should we play some money on it? <laughs> see who's right? Oh, gosh. I, I don't <laughs> want to, because one, if I'm wrong, then I'm going to have to owe you money. But if I'm right, then you owe me money. But I'm not too sure. You could just lie. Oh, or just... <laughs> what? You could just lie and just say they didn't like it. <laughs> yeah, I could, but I'm not that type of person. <laughs> uh, uh, but, um... Uh, yeah, so uh, do you think else, uh, like do you think uh, uh, like anything else you want to say about this episode, or is it all done with this one? Um, to be honest, I think I'm done. I think I've said what I've wanted to say. I think this was a great episode all round. Like two really awesome characters working together, and just being a nice little episode just to break things in and just to develop the story of these two cool characters um being together and yeah i thought it was a really good good episode all in all yeah i mean i feel like i'm just gonna keep repeating myself of what i've already said with like certain stuff which i do like about this episode and there's a lot of stuff which i do love but i think there's only so, so much i can really take of you know um stuff but i think overall's decent enough but they should have improved Casey. But, um, yeah. So, if you don't want to get onto the podcast, you can leave a comment on uh, YouTube, Reddit, uh, Anchor, if through the, uh, if through the um, like text message or the voice message. But, uh, yeah. I've been your host, Teddy. And I've been Hayden. And we'll see you all soon. Goodbye, yo. Bye. Bye. <laughs>